So in this video, I want to talk about CCK, the master regulator of digestion. Before we talk about its function, let's first tell which stimuli trigger the release of CCK and where it is produced. So CCK is produced in the duodenum by the eye cells. CCK release can be triggered by CCK releasing peptide and by the monitor peptide. The CCK releasing peptide is released from the neighboring CCK releasing peptide cell and major stimuli are just food dribbling down the, the stomach and reaching the duodenum. There's some partly digested food product which contain amino acids or fatty acids and there are receptors on these cells. So upon stimulation, these cells make the CCK releasing peptide. Also, there's certainly a gastric distension reflex that can trigger the re release of acetylcholine, which also can lead to the stimulation of the CCK releasing peptide cell to make some CCK releasing peptide, or even if you're in cephalic phase. The monitor peptide comes from the acinar cell. So the acinar cell is a cell that upon stimulation, for example, in cephalic phase re releases some neurotransmitters and peptides, or also through a, through a gastric distension reflex, there are these neurotransmitters, peptides released onto the acinar cells, and the acinar cells start releasing the enzymes like trypsinogen and also monitor peptide. The trypsinogen is then activated by enterokinases into the active form, the trypsin, and so monitor peptide also going to reach a duodenum and can help stimulate the eye cell to make CCK. CCK then can activate neurons or can also act as a hormone. We want to have maximum CCK production when we eat something, when there is food around. And so this mechanism that I just explained only works in the presence of food. Why is that? Because the trypsin could easily degrade our monitor peptide and CCK releasing peptide, but it doesn't do it because trypsin is busy with digesting food. So therefore, the dietary products are protecting monitor peptide and CCK releasing peptide to be degraded by trypsin. So again, just to summarize and compare it to the fasting state, so if you don't have food around, the trypsin will just digest CCK-releasing peptide and monitor peptide, and there will be no significant release of CCK. Again, why would you have some trypsinogen and monitor peptide and also CCK-releasing peptide if you do not eat something well? In cephalic phase, you're going to get some sort of stimulation of the acinar cell as well as the CCK releasing peptide cell. So we have a mechanism in place to avoid that we do not make significant amounts of CCK if we are either in cephalic phase or didn't eat anything. So I want to finish up this video by talking briefly about another mechanism that needs to be in place to protect all these enzymes that are going to be released during digestion. And this is a production of uh, bicarbonate, which is mainly stimulated by secretin. So secretin is produced by the S cells. The S cell has pH sensitive receptors on its surface, so when the pH is going to drop, there's too much, much acid around that could destroy the enzymes, secretin is going to be released. And secretin acts as a hormone on the ductile cells. The ductile cells have the secretin receptor, it's GS coupled, so we're going to get more cyclic AMP. And the cyclic AMP is going to stimulate a chloride channel, the CFTR channel, so chloride is going to get out and it's going to be pumped right back in by this anion exchange in exchange of bicarb. So that's how bicarb is released via the stimulation of a chloride channel and then through this anion exchange. And then the bicarbonate will reach the duodenum and can kind of protect all these enzymes that are released from its neighboring acinar cell. So this ductile bicarb neutralizes the acid secreted by the stomach as a part of a negative feedback loop for duodenal pH. This concludes the video on the regulation and production of CCK and also of secretin.